Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of To The Point Podcast. If you're joining us tonight, you know it's our season finale of Sharp Objects, episode seven and eight. We're going to cover both tonight. Uh, really interesting series. Obviously, this is the third series that Seamus and I have covered. Uh, we started with Next, then we pivoted to um, Your Honor, and now we are finishing up Sharp Objects. Uh, Shay, for you, what, what has been your favorite so far, uh, of the, th- of the three? Um, I, I, I toss it up to either sharp objects or next. I could easily tell you that your honor was my, my least favorite out of the three with, yeah. with confidence. Um, I like next because it's, it's techie, but it's also, it's very upbeat. There's a lot of great characters in this, uh, but sharp objects is the same way. There's, you know, they're very dynamic characters. There's a lot of twists you don't really see coming. Um, and it's just a little darker, which I also love. I, anytime HBO has a show, you're always going to get at least a decent quality show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that, that's, that's what we're getting here is just a decent, uh, a decent show overall. And it's a good watch for anyone who wants to watch it. Yeah. What about yourself? Uh, agreed. If you're, if you're, uh, you got a weak stomach or you, you're, you have a life that's full of sunshine and rainbows, it's probably not the show for you. <laughs> But if you're more of a demented soul like Seamus and myself, um, this is this this is prime television. So yeah. it would be good for parents. Parents would probably not like this. You got dead children, yeah. and the idea of people doing bad things to children is probably probably not up your alley. Yes, um, especially as we see in these next two episodes. If you're a mother, you're you're gonna have a real hatred for one of the characters that will that we'll touch on in the recap tonight, but. We, we ended episode six with Camille and Emma getting drunk. They were escape, uh, rollerblading. They both kind of got injured a little bit. Uh, Camille hurting her ankle, Emma being hung over and a multitude of bruises, things like that. So we start the episode, episode seven is called falling. Camille's looking at a smaller replica of her family home, which is, a uh, it's going to come up later, but it doesn't seem like much at, at first, you know, she's just looking at it. And then she wakes up from her dream. Um, and it's at this point that Adora is actually caring for Camille. It's, it's a, it's a twist of fate because we haven't seen this. She's always hard on her. She's very uh, mean and just, you know, kind of abusive to Camille. And she's actually showing some affection for the first time. Yeah. And you could see that Adora was kind of checking in on them and at the end of that sixth episode, because um, I think she's, she started to realize how close uh, Camille and Emma are. Um, Emma is definitely kind of looking up to Camille as that big sister role now and during the show. And, you know, I think it we'll, we'll see, but it's in Adora's nature to nurture and care for her, her kids um, might not yeah. come, might not come in the best ways, but, We'll get into that in a second. Yeah, uh, that's like Seamus said. We'll get into that. It's crazy, and we'll dive into it, what Adora's got going on. I had no idea what this was beforehand. And it's really interesting, and I'm actually looked into it. Um, but we then pivot to Chief Vickers, and him and the in the police force have are searching John Keane's home. Uh, his whereabouts are unknown. His girlfriend Ashley at first is like, "I'm not giving him up. I love him." And this girl has been an attention whore from the beginning. She wants to be in the paper. She wants her quotes and chief Vickers uh, to his credit. He's a smarter guy than I thought he was. He went up to her and said, you know, if you rat him out, you're probably, you won't even be in the paper. Like you're, you're going to be on, you know, channel nine news like tonight. And of course, Ashley rats him out in seconds and they actually think find, about it. Yeah. Go she on. Just, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say she doesn't like she doesn't take two two thoughts to it. She's like she hears TV and she's like, yeah, there's you know, oh look over here, there's a little bit of blood by the the uh, the bedside that uh, she found probably weeks ago. Didn't tell anybody, um, but finally reveals it. And yeah, and I mean it's I mean it's a huge find because uh, of whose blood it is. Right. It, it turns out to be Natalie, his sister's blood, and you know that's. Today's world, that's all you really need to be get a guilty verdict in some cases. Yeah. Um, so they have that. 
And, you know, and then she throws in the chief Vickers, which is so unnecessary. He doesn't have sex with me, which was such a weird thing to throw in, but she just felt like divulging that too, which I actually laughed when she said that because it was funny. Yeah. His, his face is just like, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, is this, is this, re- is this relevant to anything? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, actually like God love her. And I think this may be one of her last scenes with her in it, but yeah. she's been such an interesting character because you're right. She's just kind of that attention seeker that's, you know, willing to do anything. But sometimes you feel like she's withdrawn just solely on the fact that he's a suspect in this case and that there's so much drama around him that she just loves it so much that it's, you know, she's just it's sucking it all in, really. Yeah, she, it al- it's almost as if she's with him because he's like a, he's wanted for murder and yeah. it keeps her in, like, she would not date, you know, Joe Blow. Uh, she needs, she <laughs> needs somebody with some at least notoriety. Yeah. And so, he's got yeah. a lot of baggage too. It's not oh. like he's just, uh, he's just, he, he's just sulking. Like this guy's out to the bars. He's smoking darts inside. You know, it's an all-time low juggy when, when you're just ripping darts inside. That's, that's, that's a t- telltale sign that you, you've given up. Yeah. You, you're giving up when you, you're right. When you smoke darts inside, or if you get in a vehicle in winter and you go windows up darts, that <laughs> is, <laughs> that's it. That's a move. That <laughs> takes a, move. a certain kind of person to pull that off. And well, Johnny boy's going to try, but you're right. He is. John's a very fragile human being. Uh, we learn more about him, but he's similar to, to Camille and that he's been through a lot. He's got some mental issues going on mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he's, he's got a, he's got a lot going on upstairs anyway. So we then pivot to, you know, Jackie in the previous episode told Richard about, um, you know, about Marianne, uh, Camille's deceased sister and how, you know, it really didn't go down the way that everybody thought it was that she was sick. That's not the way she died. And, you know, Richard, it piqued his interest. So he goes to a hospital that Jackie recommended. He actually gets to meet with a doctor. And he, he, he learns that Marianne died from several illnesses. However, he found out that, you know, he found out something about Adora. And this is one of the big, big findings in this the whole series. Adora suffers from a mental disorder, and it's known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy. So that mean what that means to everybody is when a parent makes up illnesses or makes their kids sick for their own attention or, you know, a quote unquote hero complex. So they will purposely make their children sick so that, you know, they get attention themselves from other people for, you know, worrying about the kid or, you know, by, you know, nursing them back to health, they get notoriety for it. It's actually it's actually a common thing is they, they made a show about it. It was a real life show that uh, it was a real life thing that became a show. Um, it was on uh, Apple that became really popular. It won multiple awards, but this, this is scary a mental disorder Shay that I, I really had no idea about, but it, it's pretty scary. Yeah. And I think what's the, the worst part about it, Juggy, is that, I mean, obviously we look up to our parents and like they're, they're, they're our role models essentially, or if not, they're, they're, you know, leaders in your life. But at the end of the day, they kind of have power over you. You know what I mean? Like they kind of had a direct influence over yourself. And so it's not like this mental illness is, you know, just affecting Adora. It's also affecting obviously Marilyn and Emma and whatever kids that she's doing this to, which I mean, it's it's an awful awful thing because you have no for for that kid you have no power you don't have a say in what goes on with your life essentially yeah especially as a young kid i mean if we're sick and our mother says take this we're gonna take it it's just it's a no you're not fighting that you know i I drink buckley's when tash told me to drink it i will (laughs) never do it again but i did it you know could but in this case she's she basically it's, it'd be hard to prove this, but in essence, she killed her daughter Yeah, by making her sick and then she yeah. couldn't treat her. Yeah. And, he, and, uh, credit to Richard Willis, the detective, he just goes like, he's, he's going on an in detailed, like he, he's just trying to get as much medical records on this, this girl who would have died, you know, I don't know, probably 20 years, 15, probably. Yeah. 20 years ago, but he's still digging into it because, 
uh, you know, at this point, he's still, you know, I think he really likes Camille. He's trying to help her, but he's also, I guess, maybe trying to figure her out at the same time. Like, he doesn't know a ton about her. They just probably met within the last couple of weeks. But, you know, he's definitely, she's definitely piqued his interest. Yeah. And so there's another, there's Munchausen syndrome by proxy. There's also Munchausen syndrome. And that's where you fake illnesses for attention. So this, this is a multitude of different things, but Adora suffers from this and it's clearly scary. Um, so pivoting from that, Richard is all over this episode because this is where he does the most of his work. He tells the chief, you know, the, the prime witness the, who was a Mexican worker at the, at the uh, Preaker uh, slaughterhouse, he works day shift and they spotted him at midnight and he said, that's not going to hold up in court. That makes no sense. That's, you know, it's bad evidence. The chiefs, well, you know, Ashley gave him up. We got him, you know, the chief is not as interested to really look into the cold hard truth of it. He wants, he thinks it's John. He wants to arrest him and get it over with. Yeah. Yeah. It's typical Vickers fashion. He's like, like I, I don't really need it to hold up that well. It's all I needed to get a warrant, a search warrant. And even says that it's like, okay, well, even you know that it's not a real, a real eyewitness. Yeah, so he, he's just done with this case. He's, <laughs> he wants to get the credit for arresting him, call it a day. Um, Camille is also on the hunt. She's trying to find, you know, uh, she's we're trying to write a story. She hears on the street that John is wanted. He's going to be arrested, but he's kind of on the run. So mm-hmm. she knows that he likes to drink. So she goes to the bar that she frequents. He's not there, but she asks the bartender, is there another bar in the area? He says, not really. There's kind of this dive house Mexican bar uh, on the outs- outskirts of town. So she, she of course drives there. And who does she find? Oh, she finds John sitting in there drinking by himself in this really dive bar. Like a yeah. house. It is a house. Yeah. Essentially. I mean, I, the first thing I thought of was the kids playing on the, on the deck, but everyone's boozing inside. And it's just essentially a house made into a bar, right? So it's it's funny. And yeah, so she doesn't automatically go over and kind of, you know, confront him. He, she kind of eases into it a little bit. It's kind of cool scene. Like she's walking around, kind of checking everything out. She sees John, doesn't immediately go over. Instead, typical Camille fashion, gets a couple of drinks and brings it over to him. Yeah, so she sits there with him. They kind of go through this weird small talk because they're both really weird people. Yeah. Um, but eventually she does get to the point. Um, she asked him, you know, you've never definitively said that you did not kill your sister. She said, I don't think you did it, but you've never said I did not kill Natalie. He's kind of beats around the bush about it, but he said, well, you, you write stories like you're going to write anything anyway. And, you know, she, she says again, why don't you just say you didn't kill Natalie? And it, to, he kind of throws it back at her because he starts run, you know, saying this story about how he couldn't rape the two girls because he couldn't, you know, he couldn't do it himself. So mm-hmm. he decided to kill them anyway. And he said, well, there's a story for you. Yeah. He makes up a very detailed story about yes. if he was going to do it, why he would do it and the exact motives behind it. It almost right. really made me think like, I think last episode, you probably heard us say that we kind of took him out of the picture basically when Chief Vickers tells Richard, uh, Richard, that, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's their guy, they caught him. Um, but him saying this junkie just made me feel like that he did it. Even, even if he was just kind of shooting the shit and lying to Camille. Right. Yeah. It, it was so detailed. It was like, OJ, you know, after he got away with it saying how I would have done it, this is how I would have done it. You know, the glove don't fit. Yeah. So he says that, and then he kind of, breaks down a little bit and he says you know somebody somebody painted her nails after she died natalie would never have done that and you know i I wouldn't have done that and he goes i i did not kill natalie and camille says i know but this is he said it you know he finally said it out loud to people to camille oddly enough a reporter but in this moment, she really wasn't a reporter. She was there as a comforting presence to him and he's wasted and they decide to 
head back to a motel together to kind of wear off his hang, wear off his drunkenness. Yes. Yeah. And this is, this is where things get uh, a little wacky, a little, a little, a little rated R, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. There, you know, and uh, I, I think John sees that, you know, obviously Camille's got scars all over her body, all over her body. So he's very intrigued by this. He sees one on her arm, you know, next thing you know, her shirt's off and then her pants are off. And he's like, at first I'm like, okay, maybe they're not going to do anything. Maybe she, maybe he just literally is intrigued by the words. You know what I mean? I kind of thought that at first too. And then, but you know, it gets, it gets steamy. And the whole time I'm like, ah, Camille, like really like he kind of had a good thing going with, with Mr. Willis. But I mean, at, at the same time, it's, it's an angle and uh, yeah, it's, you know, it is what it is. They sleep together. Yeah, they, they do. Um, and again, he can while he's undressing, he's reading off all the different words on her, on her body, which is yeah. strange. And then he's, uh, it, it was a well-acted scene. I'll give them credit. Cause that would have been really hard to get through. Uh, mm-hmm. No pun intended. Uh, but you know, that, um that it, i give them credit for that but it was it was weird and i kind of just wrote my notes they're both messed up like these these people well, these two are just really messed up people exactly and you know what juggy they both feel comfort in the fact that they both lost a, a sibling now right and i think that they could both stoop down to that level of grief that you know it's okay you know it's okay to be and for camille like it, what what I compare it to is back to the scene where she visits uh, Richard at his hotel. Well, mm-hmm. she's not letting Richard really turn the lights on or see her. But in this scene, he's, you know, she's really letting herself be exposed to John. And I think it's that difference of John can relate to her a little bit more than uh, Richard Willis can. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because yeah. she wasn't really in this for a, she wasn't in this for a story, right? Like it wasn't like she was trying to dig up anything about him. She was just maybe caught up in the moment. Right. I agree. Um, you know, John's walked a mile in her shoes, so to speak. Richard can say he knows what she's going through, but does he really, I mean, do any of us, um, that have you know lost somebody or a sibling or in this case, a sibling uh, losing a sister, they do bond over that, which is a weird thing to go then have sex, but you know, to each their own. Um, so the next morning they're laying in bed together, kind of shooting the shit and, we hear the chief at the door say, John Keene, you in there? We're coming in. And they're both still pretty much naked. He's trying to get pants on. She's trying to get her shirt on. And the cops break down the door. And there's chief, a bunch of cops, and Richard just standing there looking at Camille like, what the hell is going on here? And she's... You know, caught with caught with her pants down, literally. Yeah, no, quite literally, and it's a it's an uncomfortable scene. Obviously, like uh, I think the actor, God, I I can't, I don't know his name off the top of my heart. Oh, it's Chris Chris Messina, uh, who plays Richard Willis. He does a great job of actually being super shocked. You know, a genuine more more of a genuine reaction than um, than you would think. But yeah, it's 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 a hard scene to watch, obviously. And then they kind of clear out the restaurant um, and then it's just left in the hotel room. It's just, uh, just Richard and Camille, you know, they kind of exchange and he, he for him, for, from his point of view, like you'd be pretty upset. And I think most people would, but he throws some harsh words down on her. Yeah. Um, basically yeah. just calling her out for her sad story, you know, like, can't believe I believe that bullshit. Um, yeah. yeah. No, t- to your point, uh, <laughs> She she tries to she starts crying tries to like grab his pants which was you know kind of a desperate move yeah that was that made me a little uncomfortable but he says you know like like you said I can't believe I bought your sob story but really you're just a drunk slut and he walks out of the hotel it harsh words because I think he he's obviously reacting in an emotional way because he he really felt he had feelings for Camille and I think Camille did to an extent. But she, she's got more going on than Richard does. He's more of a stable presence, and she's gonna more like more likely than not, you know, fall off the train more a little more easily than than he will. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's typical her fashion. She just doesn't let anyone get too close to her. And I mean, that's, that's, this is just, whether it was an accident or not, it was going to probably come out. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like she, she did what she did and she kind of suffered the consequences. Um, but Richard doesn't, uh, doesn't leave uh, Camille totally out of the dark or leave totally with nothing. Um, at first, you know, and I thought this was funny because she was there with John. I thought that there would be more of police presence involved with her juggy. Were you we surprised do. that were you surprised that nothing happened to her? Like there wasn't, you yeah. know, her, her uh, coming out in handcuffs. Good, good point. I had that written down too. In real life, she would have been arrested. Yeah, you, that's abating. So. It's it's helping a fugitive. I mean, that's a wanted. You know, for murder. I mean, you'd you'd definitely be uh, arrested. And you need bail. Um, mm-hmm. But you know the chief kind of lets her off the hook. He says, no, just pretend like she wasn't here basically, which I think was more of a helping a door than anything else. Uh, it yeah. would have embarrassed her to see her daughter in jail. Um, but so yeah, yeah, that, that happens. Uh, and so she, like you said, she kind of leaves the chief says, do you want to talk about it or whatever? And Richard's like, no, screw you. Like, see you later. Um, but he leaves the dossier you know, the medical file on her, on a seat of her car. So she gets in her car and she's got the whole medical file about Marianne right in front of her. And she sees how Adora actually cremated Marianne. And this is an interesting detail because she was cremated, but there was no autopsy. So it was really hard to tell how she was killed. And, um, we learned that Jackie, who was talking to Richard, she's tried to file different, um, tr- trying to get medical records a bunch of different times. And, you know, they've been redacted and they've been uh, rejected, uh, declined. So Camille, her first thing to do is to go see Jackie and talk to her about, you know, what, what she's been doing for the past, you know, 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, Jackie, throughout the, uh, throughout the series, I should say, has kind of come in and out um, silently. Uh, but she seems like she always had a genuine relationship with Camille, even, you know, even though she was gone maybe 10, 15 years. Uh, it sounds like she still maybe likes Camille. And, you know, I think this does a lot, a lot of explaining on Jackie's character. Um, so Camille, uh, Camille goes over to her house. She welcomes her in. Of course, Jackie's mixing drinks having a good time she's she's a booze bag as well yeah. she pulls out her little little pouch of, of drugs of, of her choice um and you know they're they're having conversation and you know camille obviously looks shook because she just found out this information about her mother and you know her daughter her, her sister being cremated and she's asking jackie she's like you know why did you you know did, did you know like did did you know and did you give up and Jackie's just basically like, who is going to believe me? So basically, basically admitting to Camille that she knew, but she really didn't have any uh, concrete evidence of it. Right. And, you know, Camille takes this poorly, of course. Um, and I understand it in a sense, because she didn't tell her, you know, this, she, she never was going to tell her more than likely. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Jackie, the whole series has been really aloof when it comes to Adora she's been one of the few people that have criticized her for being phony and this, you know, Camille leaves Jackie's with a sense of frustration, but she's also, it's also coming to her mind. Okay. My mother is a killer. She's killed my sister. Emma is sick, hungover at home alone with Adora she knows she needs to get back there because Emma could be next. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Sense of sense of urgency. And uh, I thought this set up the last of soups, uh, last episode, super well, Juggy, where it's just her basically getting home at night and it's just her in the house. This, this big, it feels empty, but it's not, it's got three people in it, but it's yeah. just this big old house. And obviously it's a vocal point for the show because there's so much time spent there, but there's also so much history with Camille her other sister being there and, you know, you know, conversations and, you know, interactions that she'd had with her mom in the past, good and bad. I don't don't feel like there's a lot of good, but yeah, you know, that's why I feel like this house is so important. So that's why I just really came home for me that, you know, that was the, that was the end. That's the ending of the first 
or sorry, ending of the seventh episode, but beginning of the last. Right. And so she, you know, she's taking care. She's a, uh, so she gets home, like you said, she's kind of, she's care she's caring for hungover Emma and going before we talk about the last episode, which we're going to pivot into what did you think going into the last episode that Adora was the killer of the other two girls? Was that your, was that your thinking? I, I think so. I yeah. think I had her pegged after this because it was there was a scene where Camille's having a flashback and this woman in the white that we probably brought up in the, one of the first two episodes, she, instead of just, a, you know, just some odd woman, it's now Adora and it's Adora in white and she's leading, whether it's uh, Ann Nash or Natalie Keene to the woods. Yeah. And then it's it it kind of comes home for me, and I'm like, okay, well, this makes a little bit more sense. Like, you know, if if you're Adora, you're trying to fix you're trying to fix sick children. That's kind of her. That's kind of her mo at this point. We know that uh, we know that Natalie and Anne were both bad kids. They both got into a lot of trouble. They got into a lot of fights. Clearly, so maybe by fixing them, she means just killing them. What what, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I was pretty pretty well convinced too because there was no other obvious target uh ashley was out of the show jackie was turned into being kind of a renegade but in a positive manner trying to uncover the truth um yeah th there was two for me i'll save the other one because i've been kind of thinking it was this person from the beginning and i just it never added up until the very end but uh and even it, john john john's at this point in custody he's still um, a suspect yeah he's still a suspect i mean um i i don't know whether is the interrogation in the last episode juggy or in the second last episode um i think uh, look at my notes here it might have been in the um might have been in the no it's in this episode yeah it is in this episode so yeah okay. he, they, he's in there briefly it's a it's a short scene but uh he he's still technically arrested he's going to prison as of right now because there's yeah. no other no other suspect and there's blood and there's mitigating factors to send him there. But yeah, the, the way it, the show has presented itself with Camille finding this information, it's all doors point to Adora. Yeah. yeah. So like you said, the episode starts with the family. It's dark. Not a lot. They never have a lot of lights on in this house. You ever notice that? It's just always a couple little, it's this old house. They get a couple lights on, but they, they like to eat in the dark a lot too. Yeah. But she gets home. The two, the, we see Alan and we see Adora sitting there and you don't really see Emma at first. She's kind of to the outside. And then uh, Camille comes in the room and you see Emma sitting there in a, it's, we, she's in a white gown and then like a, it's kind of a hat. It's, it's kind of a crownish hat with like a flower hat on top of her head. I would just say it's like a flower ring essentially on the top of her head. Right. Yeah, no, good, good one. Um, so she's sitting and she looks like hell. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> looks kind of scary, to be honest. She's like half, like she's like really pale, but then she like looks really pissed off. And I'm just kind of like, okay, what, what's happening with Emma? Yeah. She, you know, Dora's been caring for her for a day. And we actually see scenes in episode seven where she's taking medicine, you throw it up right away. It's, Clearly it's not, it's not medicine. That's gonna, it's gonna help you. We look, and we'll know what the medicine actually is further into this. Yeah. She's sitting there. Camille's looking at her like, uh Oh, like this is not good. Yeah. It's happening again. She, she's, um, you know, Emma's talking, they're talking and, uh, you know, Camille says something like, well, I think it'd be good if Emma came and live with me for a little bit, uh, you know, just as a change, it's kind of dangerous here. And if, Adora's like, oh, it's a nice gesture, but she's sick. I need to take care of her. And uh, she said, well, why don't we bring her up to bed? And Emma's kind of clamoring for this piece of cake that she's wanted forever. And But Camille knows going back upstairs is a bad thing. So she actually fakes an illness in, in the middle of the dining room. And the attention of Adora pivots from Emma to Camille. 
yeah, and it's it it kind of took me by shock a little bit, Juggy, because I mean it was the first time that at a drop, like it, it almost felt like at a drop of a dime, Adora was there for Camille. And you know, right away she's you know in her arms and Camille is just playing it to a T. She's like, oh, mama, like, mama, help me. And then mm-hmm. Adora, Adora is bringing her. Next thing you know, Adora is bringing her up. And what shocked me is that Adora brought, didn't bring her to her own room, brought her to, uh, brought her to Adora's room, yeah. which was, which was shocking to me. And there's this funny scene that, you know, C- Camille hesitates to get in there because I feel like she was never allowed in there. I don't feel like that was, that was her zone at all. And mm-hmm. Adora might have scolded her when she was younger about being in there. So she does hesitate, but then eventually she does come in. Yeah. So yeah, she puts her in there and Camille, Camille basically sacrificed herself. She knows she's got to play it up. Like you said, she's playing it off well to pivot Emma away from getting this treatment. So Adora gives her, you know, quote unquote cough syrup, but you know, Camille takes it. She makes a face. It looked like it's terrible. She falls asleep. And she wakes up shortly after she vomits, you know, it's, again, we don't know what it is yet and we'll get there, but it's, it's clearly not something that's going to help you in the long run. Yeah. And, and, and to that Juggy, she keeps, uh, um, I think she keeps throughout this episode, she keeps having flashbacks and I think she's looking back at her own sister, Marion, who passed away and she's kind of realizing what happened that whole time. She's piecing it together. Right. She's like, okay, this is why she was so sick. And, you know, all those times that, you know, I think Camille was by her bedside, hanging out with her in bed. She now understands like the the meaning behind it all. And it wasn't her fault. Right. No. Yeah. She's, she's saying, okay, Adora killed her. I, I, it wasn't, she might've made me think it was my fault. It it really wasn't me. Um, So at this point, Richard and the chief meet with John. Um, They told him that Ashley ratted him out, which was funny that they divulged that. Yeah. Um, he said he was not sleeping with her. He would have dumped her s- sooner, but he knew she would cause a scene, which was funny. I love, I love that little line. Um, yeah. And then he said he also didn't know how Natalie's blood ended up at his residence. And it, it's kind of clear that, you know, Richard doesn't think he did it. Uh, he, he said, I don't know how it ended up there, but I didn't do it. I can, I can guarantee you that. Yeah, no, his his reaction to it is pretty genuine, which makes you think that you know, obviously he did he did not know, and yeah, it's it's funny. Like he, he didn't even seem surprised that Ashley ratted him out. He yeah. was just kind of like, yeah, I I, I could have saw that coming. Like Ashley's a piece of shit. I would have dumped her sooner. He said. Yeah, and actually, the the chief and Richard sit on sit on a flight of stairs after this, and the chief kind of says, I don't think he did it either. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but he's like, I want to arrest him because I want this over with, but, uh, I don't think he did it. And Richard's like, fine. Like, like <laughs> you finally opened your eyes and you're, you're seeing it here. Mm-hmm. And so that happens. Then there's this really interesting scene for me. Anyway, the chief's getting his haircut at the barber. He seems to be there every other day. Uh, he's kind of an old guy. I don't know why he needs so many haircuts, but nevertheless, he's at the barber. Alan shows up. And he's like, oh, well, I'll come back, or whatever. And the chief's trying to talk to him. And he's like, how's Adora? Or, how's Camille? So I heard she was sick. How's Emma? I thought I heard she was sick. He goes, yeah, she's sick. But, um, you know, Camille's sick too. But you probably already know that. And she says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you're, you're at the house just as often as me. And he walks out the door. Um, so clearly these two are not the best of friends. And Alan knows very well that the chief has it, has the hots for Adora. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it is an interesting scene. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's just Alan probably boiling over like uh, all this ne- ne- neglect that he gets from Adora and, you know, she sees how well he, she gets along with the chief. I mean, it's, it was bound to happen that, uh, that Alan was eventually going to say something. Um, uh, but he kind of makes like a coward and kind of walks off. Yeah. yeah. I think the chief even yells out to him. Let's, let's talk about this. Like men and Al just continues to walk away. Yeah. I, I wish this scene would happen like episode four or five. Me too. Um, yeah. Could have carried on a little bit and that would have been a rivalry because it kind of falls flat in this episode because it doesn't really carry on. 
Uh, yeah. But I wish I wish it would happen a little sooner. Yeah. Spoiler alert: We never really know if the chief and Adora were actually together or no. anything like that. It never comes out. Assumption on that um, would have been an interesting angle, though. Like when you think about it, like that it would have made you know Adora's, we'll say, scheming of getting her kids sick and killing them, um, a little bit more hidden because obviously she has the chief to lean on, and you know right. he's the law technically. No, good good point. Um, yeah, I. I wish they would have did a little bit more of that, but again, it's a book. So this Camp Gillian Flynn could have did it, but you're gone girl and this shit, this book was pretty good. So yeah, I'm hammering it too far. Um, mentioned Camille throws up the next morning um, and the effects of what she's taking, she can barely walk. And I like, she basically has to crawl around. She has no strength. Um, and Emma comes into a room. She, Emma's, Emma's surprisingly okay. I mean, she, she is having trouble walking, but she seems to be better than Camille, which we'll understand why a little later. Uh, but she's in her room and Camille tells Emma, you got to get, you got to get, you got to tell Richard, you got to get to him and then get the hell out of here. And you tell him if I'm not around, it's because mama quote unquote took care of me, meaning she killed me. And she, she's doing this to save her sister. She doesn't want the same, her sister die twice because of her, even though it, it wouldn't be her fault, but she tells them to get the hell out of here as soon as you have an opportunity. Yeah. And you got to think, Juggy, that there's a little bit of self guilt thinking that if she would have just leave when gap, well, she's basically leaving Emma to the same fate as Marion. Right. So for her, it's probably, it's probably like, okay, I, I wasn't able to do anything the first time. Well, uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. So it's at this point, Adora puts her in the tub. Um, they chat about Marianne and, uh, you know, Adora blaming her. But, you know, I think Camille wants to start talking about Marianne and how she died and kind of get into it. But before they can go any further, Adora gives her some more medicine. Yeah. And it's at this point that... Camille just starts basically daydreaming. She's in the tub. She kind of puts herself under the water at one point. She's starting to see flashbacks of, you said the woman in white, which was Adora in the woods. And, you know, it was kind of a scary scene because you're thinking, is she going to kill herself in here because she's kind of getting poisoned or what have you. But um, she, she's basically stuck. She's in a, she's in a prison because she doesn't have to have the strength to leave if she wanted to. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a very for, you know, I would say about three quarters of this uh, episode, it feels like you're very trapped. Even it feels like from the viewer's point, you're trapped because Camille being the main character, she doesn't really have any strength to go anywhere. We also see that Emma kind of tries to escape. Well, her dad, you know, her dad sees her kind of says, OK, like, don't you go back up to your room. I'll get you some cake like you just you just relax, like, don't worry about it. Um, so even even emma from a point from emma, uh, emma's point of view you're still trapped because even if you go downstairs it's more likely than that alan's gonna see you right so she's in the tub and it's at this time that richard shows up at the preaker house he knocks on the door and he said well can i see camille They're like well no I, I i can't remember if they said she's sick or she's away it was really yeah, she, they lied. They said she was away. Right, which she is like she wasn't there. Red flag. Um, yeah. And she's in the tub, but she can hear his voice, and she's trying to get his attention. She's, but even in the state, she can't hardly talk. She can't project her voice. So she's crawling on the floor naked, trying to get to the edge so she can yell at Richard. But Alan says he's away. Uh, Adora's right there. You know, she's not here. But Richard knows something's up here. Uh, he, he's aware that of obviously what Adora is capable of number one. And he, he's called Camille a bunch and he hasn't heard back. So he, his spotty senses are tingling that, okay, something's afoot here and he's got to try to figure out what it is. Yeah. And this whole time, it's like you said, it's a, it's, it's a, a helpless scene watching Camille try and make her way from the bathtub. Eventually I think she just gives up and she just goes and she just lays on the ground. She can't even make it to the bed. She's so weak. 
you know, uh, Adora is just pounding this medicine and we don't really know what it is, Juggy, but all we know is that part of it is like her crunching it up like you would, I don't know, some herbs into this little bowl and then, and she then boils it. It's quite a process really for her to get this, to get whatever she's making into, into this bottle that looks like syrup essentially. Right. And so while that's, while that's happening in prior to the dinner, Camille called her editor, AKA Curry. And he was on the phone with his wife and Curry, you know, crying about Adora and about her sister. And, you know, Curry said, you got to come home. You know, yeah. And meeting St. Louis being her new home. You got to, I, I made a wrong call. You got to get out of there. Yeah. Curry, Curry is like a father figure to her. So he's changed in his demeanor a ton from the start of the show until now, the way he's interacting with her. And he says, kiddo, get out of there. Like, I, I, I don't want you to hurt yourself. Um, you know, I love you. Get back here. She says, no, I can't leave my sister. She, she leaves Curry a few hints about Adora and maybe the danger. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at this point we have Richard, who's a little suspicious and we have Curry who we know loves her and he's not going to let her go down without a fight. So after her being able not to walk and all of this, um, she's, they, she's on the floor. We hear Adora coming back up the stairs with more medicine. And I'm thinking she, if she gets more medicine, she's dead. I mean, she yeah. could oh, yeah. hardly do anything right now. Emma's eating cake. Basically she's kind of okay. She's not trying that hard to escape, mm-hmm. but as Adora's walking up the stairs, we, we don't hear the sirens right away as a show. We see the police lights come on and Adora immediately freaks out and says, Alan, Alan runs down the stairs and we don't really see what's happening downstairs because Camille's going through this trance where she's flashbacks and kind of nightmares of her sister and yeah, it's actually a cool scene, Juggy. It's and and one of the parts is just her as a younger version of herself, and it's the last time we see the younger version of herself. I made a note of that, and it's just her and her sister basically holding hands on the ground of Adora's thing, and they're, you know, you see the lights come over their face, like you said, you can't hear the noise, but you have a, you you know, you have an idea of what's happening, and that's that the police are arriving. Right. So, it looks like she's gonna be dead, but who comes? into the screen but curry um he's come from st louis to wing gap then richard comes into this into the screen and you know she's basically just got a towel on her she can hardly do anything but she knows who curry is she's like oh like i'm safe like i'm okay Mm -hmm. um they immediately start you know wrapping her up start caring for her and they it you know she they they go through the house. There's more and more cops and they find out, we find out that Adora has been giving Marianne and now Camille and Emma rat poison. Um, this, if you know anything about rat poison, it, it's poison. It's going to kill you. Um, and she's been grinding it up so it doesn't kill them right away, but it's no kidding that it's going to kill you. Um, it's been hitting Camille hard because she's not used to it. We actually learned that Emma has grown sort of an immunity to it because she's been given it so often. She's been lucky so that, you know, this time she's been more mobile because she's been given it more often than Camille because she's not been there. So we know that Adora's killed her, her daughter, tried, almost killed another daughter, um, pumping rat poison into Emma for you know, God knows how many years, but the other twist of fate here, they search the house, they find pliers in the home and immediately they ask Adora, what are you doing with these pliers? And the pliers match the pliers that were used to remove the teeth of Natalie Keene. And immediately Adora is read her rights and she's arrested at the time for the murder of Natalie and Anne, and they hoped to arrest her for the death of her daughter as well. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's it, your suspicions come true basically from the beginning of the episode and at the end of episode seven, you're like, okay, Adora, you know, this is it. Adora's the, the woman in white. She's the killer. She's the serial killer. John's going to be cleared. And, you know, that's a wrap. What I found funny, Juggy, is no one really paid attention to Alan. It was like, Alan, yeah. like I mean, he lives under the same roof, but it was like, oh, Alan, like you're kind of too much of a little bitch to <laughs> actually actually be considered the killer. We know it's Adora. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's he's like the, you know, in most cases in, in shows or in life, it's it's the male. Uh, and then it's the wife just like, oh, I didn't know. Uh, and Alan's like, I didn't know. You know, it just, <laughs> he's, the, he's the housewife. It's like so oblivious to what's happening in front of him. But yeah, they're kind of just like, well, it could have been Alan. And I think Richard at one point was like, no, nah, it wasn't Alan. <laughs> it wasn't Alan. <laughs> um, Completely write them off. Yeah, Adora's taken to the station. She's trying to call her lawyer. But it looks it looks like it's Adora that's the, the guilty party here. And um, see, so yeah, rat poison, the tolerance. Um, so it's... It's at this, the last 12 minutes are kind of interesting because it's a, we see, we see it's basically like a flip book. That's how I would describe I know, yep. the last couple of exactly. seconds. We see Emma start packing her stuff um, from Wing Gap. We see Camille start to pack her car and um, she's actually talking to Richard. They kind of hug and part on amicable terms, I'd say. Um there's also the scene of Camille in, in the hospital and Richard is there and he tells her that Curry, you know, was never, he, he was not going to not let the cops go and search that home because he was never going to let her, you know, be killed. So I think that that was a good scene as you see Camille kind of have an emotional reaction to that saying, you know, people actually do care about me. Mm -hmm. um, so Emma goes to live with Camille in St. Louis uh, and, you know, they, another interesting scene is uh, Emma goes to visit Adora in, in prison, which I, which I uh, found interesting. What did you make of that scene? Oh, well, I mean, you know, as, as Emma, as a kid, I mean, she's only in her, say, like mid-teens. She doesn't, maybe she doesn't fully comprehend what Adora was trying to do to her. Like at the end of the day, that, I guess that's still her mother. So she's like, you know what? Besides the fact that he tried to kill me with poison, I, you know, I'll still go see. Uh, Claire, Camille doesn't go in; she just kind of waits outside. Because I mean, I, I think she's she's just been she's you know, Adora to her is just she's dead to her essentially. Yeah. yeah. But you no, know, I, I thought it was an interesting scene. I mean, I I didn't I didn't uh, I mean I didn't give it much thought, I guess. And then uh, why? What, what you thought there was a deeper meaning behind it? Uh, as we get to the last scene, a little bit, yeah. Um... I'll, I'll give my theory on that later, but uh, okay. it, we get real close to it. But yeah. Yeah, I see Jackie outside. So I guess that's not the, that, that was kind of the last, one of the last people we see throughout the show is Jackie right. kind and of being Jackie like. Jackie is also at the prison, which, which is interesting too. Um, like, like if you don't like Adora, why are you there? You know what I mean? Maybe I told you so or something. Maybe like a one up and kind of thing. I don't know. Kind of a petty yeah. thing, but that seems like something she'd do. Mm -hmm. um, well, then we see. Um, Camille wrote an article and it's kind of a, a first person tale about her struggle with Adora. It, it's about, they all, uh, it's about Adora and what she did, um, killing her sister, almost killing her, but also about, you know, her wanting to create a new life and about her inability or her ability to care for Emma. Like she is her sister and that, you know, doing something that her mother couldn't do and wondering if she had, Adora's sickness inside of her it is really revealing article um really powerful scene where curry's reading it to her and he tells her this is going to print like this is fantastic work and as a journalism student that would never be published um <laughs> you're, I, you're calling I, that one out right away i appreciate it because i'd want it published that way uh if i was yeah. the writer but an editor would never allow the, the journalist to write a first person exclusive uh, in this, but I, 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 li I liked it a lot. Yeah, no, it was, it was good. Even the 20, 25 words that he said, it had me captive. I was like, goodness, like that's, yeah, that's some good writing. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm 
I've always been a C plus student when it comes to uh, language arts, but you know, I, I see I see talent when I see it, and that yeah. was uh, that was good. So, yeah, throughout throughout this uh, flip book that you said, you know, we see that um, there's uh, I would say a, a mother daughter duo that kind of gets close with Camille and Emma throughout this flip right. book, like that the two girls kind of bond over rollerblading and hanging out and you know just just making stuff. So yeah, yeah just. Yeah, it's, the, it's their neighbor. I, I believe they're, they're right next yeah. door neighbors. And uh, Emma becomes friends with a gr black girl named May. Um, mm -hmm. And May goes to them to dinner at Curry's and she's kind of interested in journalism. Emma's kind of aloof saying, I don't really know what I want to do. Uh, it's probably something weird. Um, but they, they have a good dinner. It's, it's kind of, you know, May seems to be like a very nice person. Yeah. Um, and then we get to the final moments of the show and we learn that May's missing number one. Uh, and that that's not so strange. Uh, her mother's talking to Camille saying, I think she was with Emma earlier, but I, they may have gotten in a fight. So I don't know if they were together because they got in a fight. They got in their first real tantrum together. Yeah. So that, that's similar to what we've seen in Wing Gap. Uh, we've heard that Emma got into a few fights with Natalie and Anna. Uh, but yeah, that, that really kind of doesn't get in my brain right away. But we then pivot to, to Camille and she's in Emma's room and she's looking at the miniature version of their home. And she's looking through the windows and you know, just kind of looking around. And then she spots in one of the windows, a tooth. And it's, she immediately, you know, the music picks up and you're like, uh oh, it, she's so like, did Emma, Emma killed the two girls, not Adora, but Emma comes into the screen. It's the last seconds of the show. And it's the last moment of the show. Emma says, don't tell mama. <laughs> sorry for laughing it's just it's just funny the way you told it was it was good it was genius but no yeah it's it's a crazy crazy ending to the show yeah um yeah in in the floor juggy i think the floor was made out of their teeth that's yeah, what I think, so. I think so i think I so. i've had to pause it and go up to the to go up to the tv to get a better look but mm -hmm. i'm 90 percent sure that she had implanted all the teeth within right. the floor of this little room and one must have got loose, and that's why. Well, that's what Camille sh saw. But yeah, I mean, what a scene! And Emma's like, Emma, she just looks like she got it a scuffle. And I mean, we get into that in these, I guess, the the very last scenes of the show. Yeah. Um, what did What did you? Obviously, she's admitting that she killed the two girls in a sense. Yeah. Um, do you think her and Adora did it together? Oh, did you not? Okay, so there was an, another scene on top of this this scene. Oh, did I you... didn't see that one. No. Oh, oh God. So this this is gonna come as a surprise. This is a genuine reaction from Druggy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it pivots. It goes into a song, a Led Zeppelin song. Shout out Led Zeppelin. And then it goes to a flashback, and it's. Emma and her friends killing Ann Nash. Ooh. Hold, holding her down, strangling her. Jesus. Yeah. Really? It goes, it goes to a flash that goes, it pivots from that, goes to a flashback of Emma killing Natalie Keene by the bedside, aka where the blood comes from. That's how oh, the wraps okay. together. Interesting. Finally, it's an it's a scene where Emma, you don't really see her, but more likely she just killed may right i knew yeah you knew that one right away when she's missing yeah yeah it was it was pretty evident but it all comes it's like this 20 20 second clip that comes together and they're just kind of flashing all over the place but i mean it's gory obviously you got kid you got these kids hold for one they're holding down and, and it's actually pretty it was pretty tough to watch but yeah that was that that's kind of like what the sh like the last thing the show presents before the, the ending credits wow um 
And interesting. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, I thought it could have been Adora and her because Adora could have gave her medicine or whatnot. And then, you know, maybe uh, Emma Got just does sleeping. this feet fetish, or the tooth fetish thing. It's like a yeah. trophy kind of thing. But um, but clearly Adora's in on it because, I mean, why else would she take the fall for it? Right, Juggy? Right. And why her going to prison makes all the more sense now. Yeah, I think. exactly. No, I, I thought so too. I'm like, okay, that's, you know. This- Mama, plead guilty. <laughs> I love that scene. Don't tell mama. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a doozy. I would say it's it's a whirlwind of an, an end of an ep- end of a show. To be honest, like yeah. I mean, here you thought you had everything figured out, but I mean, it's it's really kind of all still just up in the air. Now, riddle me this: if you're Camille, what are you doing? Like, are you keeping, are you going to, do you protect Emma? You realize she's the killer or one of, one of many killers, I guess. Yeah. Three times a murderer. Yeah. So do you inhale her? Do you turn her over? Like what, what's, what's going on here? I'd almost be afraid that I'm next. Kind of. Because, because uh, she knows, I mean, she literally Camille's the only person that know. I guess her girlfriends, but mm. I mean, if, if they rat her out, she's going to rat them out. So it doesn't do much to do that. Um, but if I'm Camille, I'd be one eye open every night. I'll tell you that. Uh, you can't live like that either. That's, that's no, just no way to live. No, right? I'd, pro- I'd probably turn her in, Shay. Yeah, or send her sister, home. But, but then again, more people die and it's blood on yeah. your hands because you didn't do anything about it. So yeah, exactly. I think... I, I, I mean, it's so difficult it's for us to say uh you know i could say oh if it was my sibling i turned them in because i'm such a good person but if, if you're not in the moment i don't think you can really say you do it because you're not it's not your it's not you're not there you're not with your sibling if it was joe blow okay you turn them in but yeah yeah i and the first thing when it came out like when you kind of know you see the teeth you're like oh my gosh it's emma i try to piece back all the times in the show that it could have hinted towards Emma being the killer. Is there any time that you would have thought, and you know, I know, and I, you talked about this earlier, just in this podcast, was Emma your suspect? Was she one of your suspects? You A said? lot throughout the show. I just, I felt right? she was such a, an intriguing character. And when she didn't die, I said, okay, there's a reason she didn't die in episode four. And um, what one scene for me, uh, that kind of, that kind of stands out is I think she tried to put blame on others a lot. Like when she was with the, uh, the, the teacher that raped Camille, mm-hmm. the way she spoke to him was really weird. Uh, it kind of made him look like a sketchy character. So that would put the blame on him. Um, the fact that her and her, you know, roller gang were always out at night was kind of something to me. Uh, when they weren't supposed to be, they're always out and about. I didn't think it would be all three of them, but I, I, she, she just had an aura about her that was like, okay, yeah, she's she's got a dark side, and well, uh, it makes sense now why why they were out and about, Juggy, because they didn't they didn't have anyone to fear. They they knew they, they were the they fear. were the killers. <laughs> like like they were like it was no wonder the whole time you're thinking, God, like why would these girls like you know like even if you're young and naive. Yeah, you still got to realize that you're in danger. But yeah. now looking back, it's like they were never really in danger. No wonder no, they were partying not at all because they were like, okay, who's gonna kill me? Me? Yeah, exactly. It's it's crazy, and you know, I just I look back and I kind of think about her and John Keane's uh, relationship. She was always leaning on John, and I think it was kind of a taunt to John. Yeah, like, I think so too. Kind of like an f you, I killed your sister, and you know, you know what what are you gonna do about it? And that's I, that's why I think John was always kind of like. He was always cautious to Emma. He was always like, okay, Emma knows something or, you know, she's maybe done something to get these girls killed, but right. he never really acts on it. He more, he more or less just is like, okay, you know, Emma, Emma's a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, too bad there wasn't a sequel to this book because <laughs> I, um, I don't know. I, I read a piece about Amy Adams and she said this was one of the hardest things she's had to do when it comes to acting and her 
the scars well, yeah. and er- everything. When it, like she said, it was one of her toughest acting performances because it was a lot. It was physically grueling on her and just to be in that mental state the whole time. Um, but yeah. kudos. What do you think about those doing that? Those scene, yeah, exactly. Those scenes where she's sick, like she, you know, that's that's prime acting. Like she's actually giving off like just being super weak, just super ill. And I mean, that's also makeup and stuff too. Don't get me wrong. But when she's like falling down on the floor yeah. and like be bare, hardly being able to stand up, like that's that's really good. And one thing, one thing I'll note is like Amy Adams is is like a beautiful woman. Obviously, she's a beautiful actress. But in this series, Juggy, she's not like, you know, she's she's not she, she doesn't really give off that vibe. She's a little bigger. Obviously, she has these scars. She's kind of pale. Yeah. But I think that's kind of what makes her a great actress is that she's able to pull off pull off a role like this right. and do it to a t you know people aren't blinded by this you know she this uh this beauty b- behind her she's actually got some you know world-class skill as well as being uh, to go along with being an actress right and the the best actors actresses that play a character transform into their body they don't get a fat suit they don't you know you know what i mean or, or if they if they're thin like i saw a preview for this mila kunis movie with, with glenn close coming out she's a a drug addict she she looks like a drug like she's thin like it it takes a lot of work to do it and it obviously i i think of joker um with uh with walk uh he lost over 50 pounds to do that movie Incredible. and the the way he had to be mentally to, to do that movie i give a ton of credit to these actors that are acting literally they're they're becoming another person and uh, it can be really dangerous. Don't get me wrong, but the ones that do it, you know, kudos to you because it, you know, even uh, uh, Hugh Jackman in Wolverine, I haven't yes. watched any of the movies, but I have an appreciation for him to get that ripped and the way he works out and the physical toll he, he morphs into. It's impressive. Yeah, no, he gives off a genuine, uh, a genuine act every time he plays that role and no, it's it's it is really incredible. Even in that last movie with Logan, mm. um, you know, he's, he's an older version of that, but he's still you know jacked. But you can tell that his body's wearing down, and he looks older. But well, clearly, that's not just all makeup and effect. That's him doing a great job. Yeah. Um, so who's your? I gotta ask. There's so many in this in this series, Juggy. There were so many great performances, great acts. Who yeah. was your? Who, if you had a top three here, who's making your top three for people? You're like, damn, they played their role to a T. Yeah. Um, in no particular order, I got to go with Emma. Um, I think she was fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed her. I'll go with Amy Adams because she was the main character, and right. I think she played you know a mentally sick woman very well. Um, and the metamorphosis with her body and everything. Uh, credit to her. And my third, I'd um, I'll probably go with Richard. I think he played a cop very well. Uh, he was persistent. He was, uh, kind of, uh, he had an emotion when he needed it. He was very focused. So I probably go with those three. How about you? Yeah. Um, I probably the same, except maybe I throw it, throw Patricia Clarkson, uh, yeah. for Dora in there besides Richard, just because you know, she, you, you, when you hate someone that much, you know, they're doing their job, yeah. right? No, it's true. It's, it's it's kind of like um uh what's what's uh breaking bad what's his wife's name oh skylar skylar if anyone's watched breaking bad you hate skylar and there's a and there's a fair reason she can be a a big one yeah so and that's kind of what uh, that's what kind of what adora projects in this it's just an awful terrible mother um with a backstory of course like she had a bad childhood herself yeah um but yeah, no, she, she just does a great job. And Richard Willis, he also, I don't, have you ever watched the center Juggy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he plays in that last season, I guess, of the center. Uh, he plays a, he plays a major role in that and he does a great job in that. He's a, he's, he's a really good actor, I'd say. Yeah. I, I, I liked him a lot in the show. Um, and to be cast on an HBO show, like you said off the top, it, you need to be a good actor because they're not going to yeah. cast you if you're, if you're junk. Um, yeah, exactly. but I like the Patricia Clarkson, um, and Skylar White comparison, you know, Skylar White, uh, and I forget the actress's name off the top of my head, but she, 
she was she was getting like death threats from people and breaking bad was on that crazy and she (laughs) she was so good she won academy awards uh, plural because she was that good at what she did and i'll admit it when i was watching the show i'm like this woman sucks like walter and she's trying he's trying to give her money but again that's that's what their job is and, and they kill it so so kudos to, oh. to the women and people that can do it effectively yeah no the the, the, the cast of women in the show was terrific I, I thought you know it was very it was very based on those they uh heavily based on you know the actresses on this show and uh they did they all did a fantastic job this is a show i wouldn't say i I'd probably watch it again soon but i'll definitely come back and revisit it just because i liked it that much yeah agreed um so this is that wraps up sharp objects um i i told shay to think about a show movie uh that we could cover next he's still gonna ponder um and he may come up with a show movie next week well or coming weeks we'll let you know he said you know he told me think of something that you want to cover and i said all right put me on the spot I like to let him choose, but I'm going to pick a movie that I've, I've seen. I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's a, it's a Spike Lee movie, uh, Spike, Spike Lee. I haven't seen the movie yet with Daniel Mamua. That's supposed to be very good. Um, uh, I, the last Messiah, uh, Judas and the Messiah, something like uh, that. Yes. Yeah. That, that looks fantastic. Uh, that's going to be in theaters. I can't wait to watch that one. That's a Spike Lee movie too. But what we're going to watch next week is Black Klansman. And okay. if you guys haven't seen Black Klansman, watch It's on Netflix. Um, it's about the KKK. And they are actually recruiting a black person to join the Ku Klux Klan which is an interesting, it's a black family to, to join it. And I think the movie's really well done. Uh, I, I like, I usually like Spike Lee movies because he's trying to tell the story from the uh, African-American perspective, which we don't often get when it comes to directing. And, you know, just the, the complex dynamics of such a white group pitching to black people I, I think it's a really interesting movie. Uh, again, kind of like Sharp Objects is not for everybody, but uh, it's kind of right up our alley. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's it, um, the Ku Klux Klan, obviously, it, it's a dark time in history. I mean, it's still probably in our current history, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not for everybody. But there, it, as much as, it, as it's... Uh, because I have watched it before, but I'll definitely revisit because I liked it that much. And one of my favorite actors, uh, Adam Driver, is in it. Mm-hmm. It's 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 very uncomfortable, but it's a good uncomfortable. I feel like a lot of people should watch it because it kind of gives you a realization of what life was like for um, an African American back, in, I guess, in the '60s, '50s, whenever it took place. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's it's an eye opener. It makes you think. And those are the best movies when you leave it and you're like, but it's funny too. It's not, it's not just no, like all like we, we're talking about, like it's this dark, like, Oh, but it's also, no, it's no it, it does have comedic scenes. You know, you're right. Uh, so give it a watch. Join us next week. We're going to talk about it. It's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, okay. Like you said, Adam okay. driver, who's kind of rising up the ranks of the acting field. He's was in the star, one of the newer star Wars. Uh, yeah. Haven't seen it, but uh, I knew he was in it. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's, he is a good actor. So uh, give, give it a watch. But um, Shay, great series here. I, I like the choice. I think it worked out real well. Um, what do you got on the go the rest of the week? Oh, busy. Busy as a beaver, my guy. Um, you know, for me, just just keep on these files. Busy season. But uh, hopefully watch my Leafs win a couple more. Kind of like to see them pull away from Edmonton, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of starting to give up hope on the Boston Celtics. I know I shouldn't say that as a fan, but yeah. things that things have not looked so tight, as Jonah Hill would say. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's about it, though. What about you? What do you what do you got shaking this week? Um. So yeah, I uh, gotta do um podcast with with writer tomorrow night about March Madness. Uh, great tournament so far. You got. Still got a 15 seed alive. You got the 11 seed, a 12 craziness. Uh, then you still got, you know, Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan hanging around too. And Alabama, who looks like a really good team. Um, 
And then, you know, obviously talk about some hockey this week. May have a guest on Friday, still working out the details on that. But, um, and then uh, Sunday, going to be doing a baseball season preview. Um, nice. Baseball starts a week from Thursday. It's crazy. You're going through the you going through divisions or just like who you like, who you don't like? Uh, going going to go through the divisions, uh, do a big deep dive, um, nice. talk about uh, everybody, talk about, you know, your Dodgers, um, you know, the Blue Jays getting more and more players hurt day after day here. Uh, some s- potential sleeper teams, some trade targets. Um, so okay. baseball opening day, April 1st. So that's right around the corner. Yes. Yeah. No, for all the baseball fans, I think, uh, I think they're excited and, you know, this, it feels like the beginning of a season where there's going to be more fans than ever uh, since, since last March. Yeah, and, for sure. you know, Texas, Texas is going full blown. I think they're a little premature on that one, but uh, it's nice to see at least a couple people. Um, it's just, it's a shame the Blue Jays won't be able to get anyone in there, but that's all right. Yeah. It's, it's all right. Um, <laughs> then they, they, they can get some fans down in Dunedin. Uh, which wouldn't be a bad place to watch a game right now. No, no, not at all. You know, maybe I'll head down to Texas so I can get a cheap home. <laughs> <laughs> you in Texas would be something. That's that's for uh, sure. That, that's got me written all over it. I think that's yeah. You know, I don't don't know how I lo- how long I'd last in Texas, but uh, be memorable. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but everybody, uh, thanks for watching us. We we'll back next week talking Black Klansmen. Uh, I'll see you guys later on in the week talking uh, about. Seamus's lease, you know, Jack Campbell, the new Ed Belfour, and lots of other big news around the sporting world. But until then, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk soon.